Thank you everyone for taking your time today just to come and even share and learn, um, even as we present to you how to better network while you're still, you know, at your comfort of your home. It's, it's a privilege and honor even to spend time with you all. But before we even proceed with the session, would like to take a minute and just reflect on what's happening, not only in our country, but global, right? All of us here as women in cybersecurity, even those aspiring to be in cybersecurity or in security or in IT, we have been um, like in an up with her battle, right? I was listening to her introducing us. All the accomplishments you hear them mention there, they don't come easily. We face challenges. We've been, um, your voice is suppressed and you find yourself in a constant uphill battle just trying to asking, can I have a seat at the table, right? So as we see people expressing their opinions and just asking to be treated nicely, you know, in a hu human being perspective, I urge every one of us, please be the voice of the voiceless, speak up, so that we can make this generation, not only the current generation, but even the future generation better, right? Even when we work in corporations, the higher you look up the ladder, sometimes you're not gonna see maybe a female, sometimes you see a sprinkle of women, but when you open the door, you're not gonna see diversity. We need to change that because everybody has a, a value or a point to bring at the table. So keep on doing what you're doing, everybody. You're in the right career. Let's continue lifting each other and continue advocating for each other and be your sister and brother's keeper and remember the younger generation so that tomorrow will be better than what you encountered from where you are. Melia, do you have any input before we can proceed? Yeah, I wanted to, to echo that. Um, if you see on the picture there, that's my, that's my professional laptop. I have a lot of rainbow stickers on there. I have a lot of women's stickers on there. Um, you know, I've, I've been an advocate for the underrepresented for as long as I can remember, and I will continue to fight for equal representation. Um, there's a reason why I'm CEO of my own company. I actually protested at my last company because they treated women poorly. They treated me poorly. They had several comments um, that were against, uh, you know, people of different religions other than Christianity, um, as well as against immigrants, as, as well as racist comments, as well as homophobic comments. I brought all of these. My voice wasn't heard, and I had I had to stop and say, if my voice as a woman, as a white woman, is not heard, how many other voices are unheard? And so I actually quit. And I ended up forming my own company after that because I wanted to run things my way and I wanted to make sure that I gave a platform and that I could then hire those people who were underrepresented and give them a space. So know that we're all in this together and that this trickles down when one group receives equal rights that affects all of us. So we just wanted to address that. Um, I understand it's, it's challenging right now, but there are ways that you can help, even if you're feeling kind of helpless. And we'll talk about that. So that is actually relevant to today in, you know, how can you network? Look at your personal brand. How do you build your network? How to maximize your LinkedIn network? And we're gonna talk a little bit about InfoSec Twitter, but there are ways that you can use these platforms for good and that you can use them for your own, building your own brand and establishing your voice. So with that being said, we'll get into there. And I wanna put it over to Noreen because she's so good at talking about personal brand. So Noreen, you wanna go ahead? Sure, thank you, Malia. Um, when it comes to personal brand, you have to realize you are your own brand, right? There's a reason why you walk into a store and buy one pair of shoe and leave the other shoe. Or if you go in grocery, you buy one packet of cereal and leave the other cereal. Because the way they've branded the product, right? It could be the label. It could be where it's positioned on the shelf. It could be the price. Uh, so many factors in it. You as an individual, 
you're your own self brand. When you get that opportunity for apply, after you've applied for a job, you have those first five minutes to do your pitch. Who are you as an individual, right? How do you stand out from the rest? How, 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 why is it I should hire you and not the other candidate, right? Um, there are several factors to branding. One of them is taking care of yourself as a whole. If you're not mentally, physically present, you honestly, you cannot be productive at your place of work. So take care of yourself as an individual, as a whole. What do I mean by this? Could be health, you do your meditation. It could be just your overall look and appearance, right? All those factors stay in place. Remember, appearance speaks volume than when before you even open your word, right? Before you even say good morning, somebody has already looked at you and already judged by the way you dressed or something like that. It's unfortunate now, I mean, the color or gender, whatever takes place, but you do your part to make sure you stand out, right? That there's nothing that you have done to rule yourself out, right? So take care of yourself as a whole. And then proceed on further to your resume. Remember your resume is what represents you in front of the recruiters. You're not in front of them, all it does is to represent you. Make sure it's clearly aligned, articulated what you want them to know about you, right? And remember to highlight your achievements. Be proud of them, announce them there on your resume, right? You may not have all the qualifications that specific job is looking for, but what have you done to improve yourself in the meantime, will you improve to, to the qualifications they're asking for? Highlight them in the resume. Your resume is speaking out for you while you're waiting for them to place that phone call. And then what, how does your social media profile stand out? Gone are the days where we only just rely just on resumes, right? You upload on uh, link, not on LinkedIn, on ladders, monster.com, dice, and expect just a phone call. Nowadays, recruiters are using um, digital platform. LinkedIn has been one of them. How do you stand out in the social media platform? Are you one who goes in and reads and never even comment on anybody's uh, posting? Have you written a blog? Have you shared any insights? Um, have you updated it to show your work history? What are you doing in the community too? Right? Even if you volunteer, please update it over there. If you're part of the YC's community, please update it over there. That's part of your branding, right? And when I'm still on that topic of social media profile, your digital presence. What do I mean by that? Take a minute right now and Google yourself. Just open Google, go www.google.com and type in your first and last name. What pops up? You'll be surprised. There is so much out there of your data that's been collected, some you're not aware of, and you need to clean that digital presence. You may never know, maybe that's why the recruiter decided not even to, to follow up with you on a job you apply. So do by all means necessary what you have to do to stand out, clean up your brand, to make sure that you have done your best effort, you know, that you're not blocking yourself in your next career growth, in your next um, maybe move even opening a business, you've done your part. Make it, the things, the things that you can do, please do. And that which you need help with, please reach out to others for help. Amalia, you wanna talk about the 30 second sales pitch? Yeah, so with 30 second sales pitch, what we mean is it's that classic, you're in an elevator, you meet with an executive or you meet with somebody important and you have 30 seconds in order to sell yourself. Um, typically they talked about selling a product. You need to be able to get what it is that makes you you and be able to communicate that to other people quickly. This is especially true when attending conferences. Um, I'm wearing my Grace Hopper shirt today. I don't know if you can see it. But when you need to stand out in the crowd, you need to get that fast. You need to say who you are, what you're doing, where you come from, where are you going, and be able to express that quickly, efficiently, and intelligently. And then 
you know, move on to the next because people won't remember. So you need to get that down, practice it, practice it with your fellow peers, but also get someone who is professional and practice it with them as well and say, how does this sound? Um, for me as a veteran, this was especially challenging because it can be difficult to talk about military service to a civilian. It's hard to translate some of those skills. And that can be the same as well. If you come from another country and you did work in another country, it can be challenging to then translate that work if it doesn't directly equate to either in, in, the, in the Western sphere, either in Canada or America. So practice that constantly. And it's okay to adjust that over time. It's okay to add to it. It's okay to fine tune it. That's something you should always be practicing. Um, and yeah, just figure out what makes you, you, what makes mm -hmm. you stand out um and what what makes you that particular person that they want to talk to and that they want to hire um so next building your network on linkedin so right now things are starting to open up a little bit but honestly the best way especially in the infosec community and in the tech community um you know you got to build it virtually and the best way to do that right now is on linkedin so the best thing you can start with is find people to connect with. So let's just say that maybe you're just starting out, maybe you're a student and your LinkedIn profile isn't that robust. You don't have any, that many connections. So one of the best things you can say, and Maureen said this, is look at your own LinkedIn profile, engage with the community, post thought provoking questions, post something. Um, I know there's a lot of privacy concerns going on. The US right now is debating um, an anti-encryption bill. Maybe post on their news article pointing to that bill and say, hey, hey, LinkedIn group, what do you think about this? What do you think about, about this? And then what you could do is if you're not getting any, any people commenting, you can invite your close connections to comment to increase visibility. That's actually part of LinkedIn's um, algorithms is comments are valued over likes. So you want more people to comment on your post It'll increase visibility and it'll keep it in that news feed. So you can ask, I might go, hey, Noreen, do you mind if uh, you, you comment um, on the anti-encryption bill? Just, uh, just kind of engage in conversation. And you know, she might reply. And then that brings her network's eyes to that question. And that brings her network, brings that attention to my post, then that amplifies my post, which then in turn amplifies my profile. And that gets a whole new network looking at that. And then when you're looking at those questions and see who's responding, connect with people you find interesting. Maybe people share your view or maybe people post um, an interesting comment and then connect with them. But make sure when you're connecting with them, state why you're connecting with them send them a send them a, a message in addition to the connection and say hey i really liked what you posted on my post um i'd like to connect further and, and speak further so noreen you want to talk about the virtual meetup since you've been hosting your mentor meetups every saturday this is huge sure um virtual meetups are very important since now we had been locked down for a while right so I mean, that human interaction is very important. You can just sit, assume in, in your four walls just by yourself. Uh, we have digital technology that allows us that we can meet face to, and, and then like right now we're doing on Zoom, right? You can see me, maybe I can see you. Um, just those virtual meetups are very important. We, we have to adapt with the changes of time and whatever life throws at us, we just have to adapt to it. So COVID came, we had to move on to virtual. Uh, for my women in cybersecurity in North Carolina, we've done four virtual events. What was the benefit of them? The beauty about it is like those people who could not attend our meetings in person, now they have the opportunity to attend because they don't have to worry about driving or work schedule or what have you. So virtual meetups are very important because you, you get to spend time with others who might not even be in your, in your circle, like maybe in your neighborhood or in your state. I'll give you an example. 
every, every other Saturday, I host um, a global mentoring session. It's not only just for people within the US. Remember, I said global. So everywhere, whenever you are in the world, you can dial in, ask your cybersecurity questions. Majority of people come there to look for mentors. And majority of mentees come, mentees come looking for mentors. And mentors come there to look for mentors, tees. And then we learn about, you know, um, something cybersecurity. And then because of that, they get to have their questions answered. They get um, guidance. So that's a benefit of virtual attendance. We've had six people who have given testimonies where they had been laid off and now their current employers asking them, during this time shutdown, what have you been doing to improve your skill sets? You know, I understand you were working in January. Here we are in June. What have you been doing on six months? And the person just pointed out to the LinkedIn group for the virtual meetup, say, I've been attending these sessions and interacting with others in the community, in the cyber security. And that way I've sharpened my skills, I've stayed up to date with the industry. So I think I'm the most viable candidate. Their hiring managers wrote me a note asking me, do you know this person, have they attended your sessions? I vouched for all of them. And because of that, they got their job because they showed interest. They showed that they are still keeping on and keeping on. So attend virtual meetups, virtual events. They could be webinars too or podcasts or a session where you want to even share your idea. Sometimes don't just attend and just be silent. Attend and request to speak up or ask a question or even be one of the people presenting, right? Don't, don't just be silent and just pop your head when you're looking for the job. Uh, be a participant, let your voice be heard. Share what you have to share because what you have to share, others may never have heard about it and they're going to learn and you may never know who you're going to help when you're doing that. The other one was join a LinkedIn group and participate in discussions. I've seen so many groups out there uh, where they, they even host um, questions, for a weekly question where people get to put in input. Um, others even share by writing blogs. Others share what they're, what they're experiencing. I think it's a good way to showcase who you are. Remember, it's part of your branding. Use what you got, right? participate in that and join those LinkedIn groups because it has other people who know maybe knowledge that you don't know. And just because you're in that group and they share the knowledge, you get to learn. Um, and then ask your personal connections for help. Remember, I don't know everything. Malia doesn't know everything. And by all means, not everyone in this course knows everything. But somebody within my connections or your connections may know about a skill that I may be interested in pursuing and I need guidance. So reaching out to that connection, they might help you in that way, right? And don't always reach out just for help. Just even reach out and check out to them and say, how are you doing? Uh, I know it's been a busy week. It's been a tough moment, uh, not only with just COVID, even with the unrest that's taking place. Uh, so I'm just reaching out to see whether, hey, are you okay? Second, um, I'm here in case you help or, or you need somebody to talk to, right? Because relationship is, it, it has to be um, a dual relationship, communication both ways, right? Not just reaching when you need help. Uh, we all have that human element within us. So let that shine, um, even as you're making connections. And then, um, so even when you interact on LinkedIn, and also when you send a personal message along with the connection, don't just say me connect Noreen. Just, just even say, Noreen, maybe I had you on this we webinar and I was very, I was fascinated by the point you brought up. That's connecting with you that we can continue with this discussion or many others, right? Just drop a personal message, make it personal. Don't just be cold and just click connect and let it go because that human element is very important. So that's always good to do. And when they connect with you, also reach back and just say, thank you for connecting with me. And they can say, this is what I do. If I reach out to somebody, I'll say, Mr. XYZ or Miss XYZ, I saw you wrote a post about this. I liked about it, about, and you do maybe one or two lines of what I liked about it. And that's connecting with me. When they connect with me, I engage in the conversation. I say, thank you for reaching out. Um, besides your post, this is what I'm working on. So feel free to reach out if you ever have any questions. 
that way you've invited them into your conversation, right? And it's not just I've connected with you and I'm quiet and I'm starting to um, collect the number of connections or followers. I'm very careful on who I connect with. And because anybody I connect with, I, it's like a, a, my inner group of people who I want to keep in touch with. So by no means do I want to have 50,000 followers or 50,000 connections who I never interact with. So keep it personal and keep it engaging and keep checking on each one another. Well, I yeah. think that's yeah. it, Malia. Um, do, do, can we pause here and ask the audience to see whether they have any questions? Because we want to make it interactive. We don't want to just be a one-way monologue conversation. Yeah, and, uh, and one thing I wanted to put in there too is ask for recommendations of people to connect with. Again, if your network, if your LinkedIn network is only like 30 people big, uh, it can be challenging to try to grow mm -hmm. that. So what you can do is ask people you're already connected with and say, hey, do you know anyone else who is interested in data privacy? Can mm -hmm. you introduce me to anyone so I can start a conversation? And that's completely valid. Um, you know, I've done that several times or I've done that for other people where they say, hey, I'm really interested in digital forensics. And I say, oh, I will introduce you to my friends, my personal friends who are in digital forensics so that you can then take that conversation and engage with them and learn from them. So it's completely okay to ask your connections and say, do you know anybody in pen testing? Or do you know anybody in this that I can speak with? And then they can answer my questions. That's completely okay. And that shows that you're interested and that you are engaging in the conversation. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I can't see the chat. So does anyone have any questions so far? Or if anybody wants to speak up, that's fine. And if not, um, so we'll keep going. So how to maintain your network. Um, Norman is absolutely right. Don't just reach out to people when you need something. That's a good way to get someone on your bad side. Um, I've had that happen to me a few times where some of the people that I either mentor or some of the people that I connect with, they only reach out to me when they need a job. Well, that's not all that I'm good for. And that feels kind of like they're using me at that point. So I'm less inclined then to help those people than the people who reach out and, you know, genuinely either check up, hey, how are you doing? Hey, you're a small business owner. COVID-19 wiped out a lot of small businesses. How are you doing? Mm -hmm. Those are the people that I'm going to remember. Those are the people that I am going to put forward and that I'm going to recommend versus the people just today, I got a LinkedIn request where someone sent me a message. It was a friend request. And within the message, they posted a link to their Google Drive, supposedly with their resume. First of all, as a cybersecurity engineer, I'm not clicking on a random link. So that was an instant no. But it's things like that. It's like, don't just call, talk to me when you need something. Reach out. Um, right now, everything's really turbulent. So this is a perfect time to check in on your connections and say, hey, how are you doing? And also to show thanks or appreciation. Not enough mm -hmm. people, especially like at Noreen and my level where we may mentor hundreds of people, we don't, we don't ever show that or see that thanks or appreciation and that means a big deal and we don't necessarily want thanks all the time but that one person out of a hundred that says hey you know what thank you for connecting and thank you for helping out um, that really makes my day personally I've had several people reach out to me when they finally got a job and I might not have heard from them for months but they'll come reach out to me and say hey remember when you helped me like six months ago with my resume or you gave me some advice I just want to let you know I got a job thank you so much holy cow, mm -hmm. that sustains me. That means the world to us. So make sure you're doing that and make sure the messages are two-way conversations. Again, Noreen was right. Engage in that conversation. Keep it going. Don't just say, hey, thanks for connecting. Okay, that just stopped the conversation. Get something else that continues that and, you know, check in with your contacts. We kind of guesstimate, you know, every, every month or every three months and you can pick Noreen, I think you said you pick people at random, right? Um, right. And so just ask them how they're doing, what's new. One big thing right now is make a recommendation on their LinkedIn profile 
that is something I, I love that somebody, some, one of my friends uh, did that just recently where they said, Hey, pick three random people that you're connected with, write them a recommendation. It took mm -hmm. five minutes tops, but now three of my connections now have recommendations from me. I didn't necessarily work with them, but I know them as a person. Now that is a character recommendation that will permanently go on their LinkedIn profile that anyone going forward will say, oh, wow, this person has a personal recommendation from this other person. They must be pretty good. And if you do that and kind of share the love and, and also recommend skills, that's something that you may see on there, uh, recommend Noreen for leadership skills or recommend Noreen for uh, Cisco skills or something to that effect. It's such a simple thing to do. Just say, yep, recommend. And it's something that will help out the other person because that's more, the more other people that you can help out, it'll come back to you. All of that will circle back to you. Um, right. I don't know if you wanted to, I kind of rehashed a little bit of what, what you said. So I don't know if you wanted to say anything else. No, that. that was good, Malia. Yeah. Um, and just, so here's some like just technical things about your LinkedIn profile is get a professional headshot. I know right now it's not like you can get out to a photographer and get a headshot. Our phones are really good right now. They have really good cameras. Make sure that you have good lighting, wear a good top, you can wear basketball shorts on the bottom, but just make sure you get a good headshot, do your makeup for the day. It can be against a blank wall and put that on there, you know, don't take the don't take the selfie from the car with your sunglasses. Make sure that you're presenting your best self because Noreen was right. Appearances do matter. You will be judged on that, unfortunately, but it's how you are presenting yourself. Um, and make a custom URL. So I have in here a screenshot. When you're looking at your own profile, you go to edit public profile and URL, you click on that. And then again, at the upper right-hand corner, so this is the upper right-hand corner I'm talking about, then it says edit your custom URL. So personalize the URL for your profile. That way it makes it so easy. And you can put that straight in your resume. And then that way it doesn't say, Malia uh, one, two, four, RZ, X, blah, 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 blah. It looks professional, it's short, it's to the point, and it's easily shareable. And make sure you have your bio. A lot of us, I know for me, I really struggle to write a bio. Um, <laughs> it is, it's mm -hmm. hard for women, um, especially, we feel like we're bragging. Um, I got to tell you, that bio that um, Ikjot read, read off, I agonized over that. I have rewritten my bio so many times, and especially as a veteran, we're taught, you know, just be very silent, be very humble, don't talk about your service. Um, so it, it's something I've struggled with for years. So that's not something you're going to perfect overnight. So have someone help you with it. I actually had a, had a girlfriend who she helped me with my bio and she actually amplified. So a lot of that is actually her words, not mine. And mm -hmm. you know, I, I then edit it, but it can be really, really awkward. Noreen, have you experienced that too? For my bio, I, yes, it was a struggle writing about me because it's, I can sit back and Praise people and write a whole biography about them. But when it comes to us, you it like, uh, I don't want to really do this, but you got to because yeah. it's, it's, it's again your personal brand. And I realized I have to take a self reflection and celebrate my accomplishments. If, if others are happy about my accomplishments, I who accomplishments should be more excited than them. So when I got that realization, I said, okay, I'm going to update my, my bio with, with excitement because I am happy of what I've accomplished and I'm just sharing and that's part of my bio. So yeah, I've experienced the same, Malia, so I understand. Yeah, it's, it, again, it's something that could be awkward. It's the same as the 30 second sales pitch. It's going yeah. to feel awkward, but if you, if you kind of, I kind of had to step away from myself and I have to think of myself almost, almost like I'm selling a product and cause you are, you are, you're selling your brand, you're selling yourself, you're selling your product. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it that way, and if you wanted someone to buy into you, buy into your product, how would you present that? And if you can kind of isolate it that way, that's at least helped me 
kind of formulated formulate my 30 second sales pitch but yeah this is a this is a constant problem i know people throw out imposter syndrome all the time it never goes away it it always exists it's always a battle against it so that's where again having those other people uplift you uh, noreen and i do it to each other all the time where you know we'll be like what are you doing put that on your problem Wow, that's something to celebrate you know like hey amplify that whoa you were just nominated for this that's amazing let's go um so it's it's something just continually to to work on it um and i want to talk about volunteer experience this is something i've noticed a lot of people don't include on their linkedin um or they just bury it at the bottom so linkedin is a as a massive page and at the very bottom, hidden underneath all of your professional experience might be volunteer experience. For instance, if you hold any sort of leadership position or you are an active member or an active volunteer in a volunteer organization, 100% put that under your experience section. Put that as a, under your professional section. For Ikchot, for example, she's the president of Wises Windsor. 100%, I should see that in her professional experience. Because to be honest, if you're putting in, if you're treating it like a part-time job, which a lot of these organizations are, you put in 5, 10, 15, 20 hours a week into this organization, that's work. Even if you're not being paid for it, that's work. That's leadership skills. That's organization. That's project management. That's... Um, you know, social, social networking, that's marketing. There's a lot of skills that you develop in a volunteer organization that is absolutely relevant in mm -hmm. a professional job. A lot of times in cybersecurity, especially, we have to have really good business negotiation skills because we still have to talk to these board members and talk to people who are non-technical mm -hmm. and explain to them why they should invest in our cybersecurity programs. So guess what? If you have volunteer experience where you are talking with sponsors and you're talking with people and you have project manager, product project management, that is absolutely relevant. And that's something that you should talk about on your LinkedIn as well as your resume. I see too many people with leadership positions in these volunteer organizations. They just buried at the bottom. I volunteer with WESIS. That doesn't tell me anything. You founded the organization. You founded the group. You run everything. Hey, that is way different than you're a member. So, uh, Noreen, you want to, Noreen, you're good about this, updating your profile every three months. I'm not as good about that. For the, um, is it this on the maximizing LinkedIn or uh, just updating? Update your profile. And also you include all the conferences and classes completed. I know I am not as, as good about that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always to, good to have the latest and greatest um, on your profile because remember that's where the recruiters or your next hiring company are checking out on you right uh, picture this it's it's like when when you're sitting in front of a tv and maybe a dealership next to you or just within your state has released a new model of car right they they want you to know about the latest and greatest of what they've come up with they don't tell you about the old ones they will tell you about the new ones Right, you know, you know. For example, it's a it's a, a car X Y Z. But today they want to tell you this car it, it drives faster, it, it has better uh, exterior outlook. Same applies to you. As time moves on, you are, are piling up a lot of accomplishments. You're putting on a lot of work effort. You've you've done your certifications. You have your work experience. You have your education. You have your connections participation in the community, volunteering, joining Oasis organization. I mean, all these changes, you need to keep updating on your profile. You don't want somebody to reach out to you uh, and tell you, well, your resume contradicts on what I see on your profile, on your social media. And just by that, they say, they don't have time to reach out to you to clarify why the difference is. So do by all means necessary, do your part to, to stand out, to build, establish your brand, which updating your profile is one of them, so that you can worry about the other things that maybe you've not accomplished and you can work with the person who's hiring you or what you aspire to be 
um, polishing that. But what you can do, please do. Remember, it's always good to be prepared for an opportunity that you do not have, then have an opportunity presented to you and you're not ready. Mm -hmm. And I see a question there, Malia, hold on one minute. She says, oh, yeah. from Tracy, she says, how are you keeping up from being overwhelmed with all these free resources, many, many webinars available? <laughs> That's a good question, Tracy. I'm in those shoes too. I'm receiving so many of them, but what I've done is I register for the ones I'm interested in. What I can join, I join. If I don't, they will send me an email saying, here's the recording or a power slides, and I'll look into them later. Um, but the ones that I'm really interested in, because remember, you have to know your passion. You really have to know what is it in cyber, what domain of cybersecurity do you want to really thrive in and become the subject matter expert in it. For those ones, anytime I see threat intelligence, oh, I'm right there. I sign up on those ones. When they talk about data privacy and governance and all, I'll sign up and I'll listen to it maybe later on or a couple of days or weeks. But threat intelligence, I'm right there. So I, Tracy, to answer your question, I pick and choose based on my interest and my keen to want to know what they are presenting. And I try not to overwhelm myself with them because it's too much coming at us. Because so, you remember, you have to also take care of yourself as a whole. You need to have your own um, personal time where you unwind and just self-reflect and step away from electronics, step away from books, you know, refresh, and then come back and, <clears throat> and do what you have to do. So that's how I'm keeping up. Uh, Malia, you wanna put up something for her? No, that's, that's about the same. Um, I, I do a lot of, I spend a lot of my day online and a lot of um, engaging and interacting. And uh, my boyfriend calls me, a, I think he calls me an introverted extrovert or something, something <laughs> to those lines. So at the end of the day, um, I gotta be honest, I'm tired of people. So I, I like to do stuff on my own. So I don't always want to join a webinar live. I don't always want to join, you know, groups live. So I do like the recordings and I'll go back and look at it later. Um, for me, I pay attention to a lot of the policy updates and a lot of the policy changes because I, I do a lot with governance, risk and compliance. And so there's so much information, it can get overwhelming, especially there's this new law, CMMC, that's coming out, and I can't tell you every day there's a new thing. So after a while, I just kind of was like, okay, I'll, I'll stop following it day to day. I might do a weekly check-in. So yeah, at the end of the day, take care of yourself. Um, and, and once you kind of get into cybersecurity, you kind of find your niche, you'll kind of see, I try to stay at least aware of all the other things going on, but I don't necessarily dive into them. With the, with the threat intelligence, I pass that on to my other friends. I'll tag Noreen, say, hey, here you go. Um, or Aspen, hey, this is relevant to you. And then I hope that they'll tag me in, you know, the GRC or the policy or the privacy updates. Okay, then I'll, then I'll do that. So yeah, I think it's, a, it's about the same. Um, which then goes into posting on LinkedIn. You know, we, we talked about this before. This is all part of the algorithm. So LinkedIn updated their algorithm, um, I believe it was either 2018 or 2019, that they saw that there were the popular LinkedIners, the kind of celebrities of LinkedIn, like Richard Branson and, and um, uh, Bill Gates, et cetera. They were getting a lot of attention and just rounding out everybody else because they just got a lot of likes. Well, LinkedIn completely got rid of that and they now will amplify anybody who has comments because they want discussions on LinkedIn, not just a, like a big, I don't know, like fest. So that's what's key. If you want to increase your visibility, you have to like and comment on other people's posts. And that, again, that increases the visibility and engagement. Then you need to post a thought provoking question or interesting article, but ask for opinions. You want people to engage. This is what we were saying before, ask close contacts to comment on your posts. Um, since I know Noreen is interested in threat intelligence, I may post something that is related to threat intelligence and I may even tag her. Make sure it's relevant to the person. Don't just tag Noreen because she's super awesome and popular. 
but I might tag her and say, hey, Noreen, what are your thoughts? I know you're the expert on this and you are engaging that person and you're calling them out and saying, hey, you are the expert, I am not. Please, please talk to me about your opinions. What is your SME on this subject? And then when they comment on your post, like their comment and try to respond. That way you're keeping the conversation because you don't just want it to be a one, one way thing. You want it to continue. Um, and this has actually led to me having some, some awesome business contacts. I've commented on other people's posts. I've engaged with them and I've met business owners from around the country that now we're working together because of LinkedIn and because they posted something about small businesses. I posted something, we had a conversation back and forth. We liked each other or at least we friended each other and we continued the conversation. And I never would have gotten that business contact if I hadn't engaged with them on LinkedIn. So post pictures. So pictures have two times about the views on LinkedIn. And I'm laughing because Noreen, we're gonna show examples in just a moment. Um, but Noreen is the best one when it comes to posting pictures. She's always posting pictures and it has so much engagement. So make sure to keep it professional relevant. This is an Instagram, it's not Snapchat. Make sure it's relevant to what you're doing um, and use hashtags, but use them responsibly. If you limit it to just two lines of hashtags, keep them relevant and that's two lines on the desktop uh, version of LinkedIn on mobile limits about three anything beyond that and you've seen I'm sure you've seen these posts where it's just like huge swaths of, of hashtags you're spamming and actually LinkedIn will catch that in their spam filters and they will block your post so just make sure you're keeping it short relevant to the point um, and using it responsibly but again using those hashtags can increase your visibility um, you can get your post trending in those hashtags. Um, and I'll, I'll show examples of that in a moment here. Um, but if you're going to post that you just graduated from Wieses Windsor and everything's cool. And then you go hashtag Google, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, hire me. That's just spam. Don't do that. <laughs> they won't, I promise you, they won't see it. Um, and you're just going to get flagged and possibly have that post removed. <laughs> um, but if you tag a sponsor at an event, that's okay. And that's encouraged. They want you, they're sponsoring you. Um, they are participating that then that's completely okay. Like in this event, it's completely okay. Hashtag leases. We have leases people participating. So, and then that kind of increases the visibility. And then that's that two way street where they're, they're sending their resources to help you out, help them out by tagging. We've done that in Wisa SoCal. We were sponsored by Netflix last year. We got hosted at Netflix headquarters here in Hollywood. And of course we hashtagged them because it was cool, it was Netflix, but it was relevant to the event. So make sure, again, keep everything, everything relevant. So here's some examples that I just took from my own LinkedIn. Um, it was from a while ago, but this is these people here. Um, Karen and Angela. So they're talking about, um, you know, privacy. Angela's talking about privacy here. And I said, yes, I agree, blah, blah, blah. And then someone else is responding to me like, oh, yes, it's already, you know, blah, blah, blah. This guy, Jason and I, um, he was the author. My friend, Angela, was the one that commented. I was not connected with Jason at the time. We then became connections. And it's been an awesome conversation. And now he's been a good connection. Same deal with Karen. Um, she had posted uh, talking about CNMC. I talked about that earlier. And I said, yeah, I'm also curious about this, blah, blah, blah. And you can see I have six replies and I ended up getting three friend requests from that, all in the same business sphere and all, again, potentially helping my business. So that's ways that you can continue that conversation and continue the comments and potentially make new contacts. So here's Noreen. So I want y'all to just take a look at the, the third picture here. And this is from Noreen's LinkedIn. <laughs> and she's got, that's not a, that's not a lie right there. 81,000 views. That's 81,000 people looking at Noreen's profile. So, holy cow, Noreen, talk to us about pictures. <laughs> yeah, pictures are important. 
are because remember our pictures speak more than words, right? <clears throat> but I want to take back and just let the audience know why, why are we emphasizing about connections and we pointing out to LinkedIn and everything? Because that's the new, the new wave right now, right? And if we don't adapt, you, you, you're going to be extinct, right? So a lot of recruiters, a lot of companies are using social media, LinkedIn to be the one for the professionals. So that's what we're using to, to showcase where you can self-brand yourself. But also emphasizing the art of human element, that connection, keeping engaging. Because remember, a person you may be chatting with today, maybe your manager, maybe your coworker, they may be your mentor, or they may be a business partner. That network is very important. And we've seen the importance of network during this time when we've been shut down because unlike the days we used to go to the office and we always up and down and meet people, when you're locked in in your house and you didn't have a builder network, then you're starting to build your network. Unlike me who had built so much network, all I had to do is to spin up a meeting invite and all my connections join and here we are, virtual event. So keep up with the con connections and networking with others. In cybersecurity, networking is key. You can bypass by that. I've had people who have reached out to me just to, to sponsor them for a job that they are applying. And just by me speaking with that person, it makes their door wide open and they have the opportunity. They don't have to wait for three or four weeks to hear back from the recruiter. Why? Because of power of networking. So keep on networking. That's what we're really emphasizing. But when you're networking, engage with the audience. The picture on the far right corner here uh, with the 81,000 views, now I think they've, they've reached to 120 right now. I was being vulnerable. Part of <laughs> this journey in cybersecurity, I don't know whether you've encountered it, but I have encountered it. I've realized in order for me to continue to grow and to reach where I want to be, I have to be vulnerable. I took a step back at the beginning of the year. I think this was, when you took a picture, it was four months ago. So it was in January. I took, when you're writing the goals for the year, uh, of course, being locked down was not one of them. You know, I had aspirations of flying here, flying there, <laughs> attending conferences, speaking at conferences, but, you know, Mother Nature has something different. I look back and I said, so many organizations are suffering these cyber breaches and ransomware attacks. We're missing that one element of a person who looks at the security at the bigger picture, right? Not the everyday person who does the networking, looking at the traffic or project management. That, must, that person was the chief information security officer. The one who approves, yes, let's buy that product to help on the defense in there. No, we're not going to buy that product because it does not meet our one, two, three. Let's hire that person. Even though they don't have all the skill sets, I can see they have the ability of learning. They, they, they want to grow, right? And I aligned with that and I said, I want to be a chief information security, or chief information security officer, excuse me. So I did my own research. Who are they? What do they do? And then I searched because I like reading books. It's the easiest way to learn, my friends. Why? Because this person who wrote a book, they spent maybe months and years putting all that information in a book. And me, I can order it on Amazon, get in the next day. In a week or so, I have learned from the experience. So I bought the books. I started reading them. They were very impactful in my career growth. And I posted on LinkedIn and I said, since I aspire to be a CISO one day, I have decided to... Uh, begin the journey of my quest by reading these books and I give them credits because it's good to give credits to others. Don't be selfish. Even when somebody mentors you and you're successful in your career, look back, say thank you. And the most important thing you can do for your mentor is to pass phone forward to somebody else, mentor somebody else, make it pass it along. So I gave them credit. I mentioned to them, none of these others knew me. I didn't know them. I just ordered the books and they put it there. Each and every one of them reached out to me. I can help you through this journey. 
I can be your mentor. Let me know how I can help you. Among many others, if you go to the post, you'll still find it there. Still reaching out to me till today, asking how can I help you? How far have you progressed? What are the hindrances you're experiencing? Are there other women looking for this? Are there others you can suggest to me? But if you have never connected with me or be vulnerable with me and let me know that that's a journey you'd like to train, I can speak up on your behalf. What I learned is being vulnerable is not a bad thing. It actually works out for you because most people are afraid of speaking out and therefore you'll never move forward. You never get to your career to where you want to be. But if you can speak out and target the audience, because when I posted this, I was targeting the chief information security officers in the industry. I did not just reach out to the general community. Just because you're in security, please chime in. 99% of the people who responded were in the C-suite. It may be a CEO, a CISO, uh, a VP, a chief technology officer, and many people who own their businesses. Some even propelled me and they said, Noreen, why are you shooting yourself so low saying CISO? Why don't you go for CEO, right? And I said, well, you know, I have to crawl before I walk, right? <laughs> Baby steps. <laughs> so that's, 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 that's the power of networking, being vulnerable and explaining where you, your journey is and having others help you along the way. Because remember, cybersecurity is not a destination, it is a journey. And like any journey you go and you travel, you don't enjoy that vacation place if you went alone than the way you'd enjoy if you tagged along with a friend or your family. The middle picture here is my cybersecurity women here in North Carolina. We used to meet on a monthly basis in person, but because of the current situation, we moved virtual. Attendance would range from 30 to 155 women because the, that connection of the human element. Anybody who attended this meeting, I made sure they feel welcome. Come here, we're here to help you, to support you, to rally behind you, and to even give you, offer you guidance. Because many of us sometimes don't even know where to begin in cybersecurity. It's, it's a big monster, it's a big, like a cobweb, right? It's a big maze. But, just breaking it down and telling people you can either be on the defense, offense, or response, I mean, incidents response, at least now they're like, okay, so have these three to worry about, then where to stand out, right? But people kept coming for our meetings because they were getting value. And I always told them, if you don't mind, let's take a picture and I'll post it on LinkedIn because of course you have to get people's permission before you even post it on LinkedIn. Even if you attend a conference and you take a picture with your friend, maybe she's not comfortable to be on social media, always check with them, right? So I'll post over there and people will comment just to showcase what we, the women in North Carolina are doing. And by that we'll see many women showing up, people will drive for three or four hours just to come attend the meeting. And then the one on the far left here, I think me and Malia, we were speaking on the WISIS uh, conference. And it opens opportunities because many people are attending from all over across the globe. So use pictures, they speak volume and more than words. I could have written a long essay on my top right corner here where I'm pursuing to be a CISO, but I chose those three books and I put them there. And you can see it trended like wildfire. I mean, the 81 things was within maybe a week or something. Now it's over 100 something. But you speak just to illustrate what you're doing. Even when you're writing a blog, right? Uh, let's say, for example, if you're writing about um, COVID-19. Um, what's going to happen after we go back to work? It, maybe have a picture office, you know, with your suggestions or how people should be spaced out, or, or just find something, an image, to illustrate what you're trying to articulate to your audience. Yeah, and, and real quickly, because I know we've, we've talked a lot about photos, is the, mm -hmm. the example on the one on the far left with uh, Rhea here. She's a student 
who I believe just finished her master's and again is trying to grow her own cybersecurity network. So she did, I use this as an example of where she tagged me and Noreen and then Mona Lisa in this conference and then used a proper hashtag. And then that way she ended up getting quite a few views and likes and comments on her post because then she brought in my network, she brought in Noreen's network um, to look at her post and that's gonna help her as a student too to grow her own network. So that's, a, that's proper posting and proper tagging. Um, and again, in order to, to kind of grow your own network and that's completely fine. So here's also, we talked about hashtags. So here is, I talked about Netflix. Um, and where you know uh, one of our one of our friends at Netwit Netflix, Ben Lim, he's the manager of information security at Netflix here in LA. And um, this was right during the COVID time. So you know he said, "Hey, I'm hiring a senior security engineer." So then I reposted it, and I know that Ben and Ashley, they are my contacts. They are my friends. They are at Netflix. They have been. I wanted to call out so that my network knows, hey, these are good allies, these are good people, they will take care of you, they actually do care about diversity and inclusion, they've been good allies, I tagged my own organization, and then I hashtag, you know, Lisa's Lisa SoCal, again, for visibility, because I want women, I want, um, you know, the underrepresented community to apply to these jobs. Um, and he liked it, he, th he thanked me for sharing it, etc. cetera. Um, and then again, with Grace Hopper, you can see I had posted, hey, we're going virtual. And I posted everything that was relevant to Grace Hopper. And you can see I got a bunch of views because again, I wanted this to be, I want to spread information. I wanted it to increase visibility. So I used every sort of hashtag that was kind of related to Grace Hopper and Anita B. So these can be really powerful tools. And you might be thinking, man, I'm not, I'm not made for this. this is weird. But again, it's once you get used to it, um, it just kind of it kind of comes natural to me now, but it's ways that these are tools, put them in your tool toolkit and they can be really powerful to get more eyes on your profile. Um, so then we said, again, we talked about tag companies and people responsibly, only tag them if they directly impacted or connect to the post. Don't just tag Bill Gates because you want to work at Microsoft. Uh, you know, tag someone you may know at Microsoft. That's more impactful. Um, but be cautious with tagging, you know, ask yourself, how will it impact you or the company or person in, in that post? Um, because not everybody, not everybody can speak up or not everybody can comment on certain things. A lot of times the businesses that we work for, they may have really strict guidelines on what we can actually talk about or what we can comment on. So just be cautious. Um, how often should you post? This is again, this is dealing with the algorithms. If you post too often, you can get flagged as spam on LinkedIn. This happens more with the people who are like social media marketers or maybe recruiters, stuff like that. Um, there's been a few numbers thrown out there, but you should at least post something once per week. Stay on people's radar, stay relevant, stay in people's news feeds. Trust me, we're looking at that. We see this. Um, and if you can, comment on at least one post daily, if possible. You want to stay relevant. You want to stay visible. Stay in our news feeds. I think, uh, Noreen, you probably have like 8,000 connections. I have close <laughs> to 3,000 or over 3,000 now. That's a lot of people to filter through. But not everybody's commenting. Not everybody's posting. So I don't see everybody's you know, profiles. I don't see their faces. I'm not reminded of them every day. The ones who are commenting and posting, yep, I sure is, I sure do see them every day and I'm reminded they stay in my memory. So those are the people that I get asked all the time. I'm sure Noreen, Noreen you get it too. Uh, hey, uh, I have this position. Do you know anybody that could fit this position? And so I'm going through, I've got a mental image of everybody that I know who is looking for a job and then I'm going through them and then I'm going through who have I seen on LinkedIn who's going to spark my memory because then I'm going to put them forward for the job and I'm going to recommend them. But if I don't see you in my newsfeed and I don't remember you, I'm not going to recommend you. So it's important to stay in those news feeds, stay visible, stay relevant. Um, and also watch your tone and word choice. And mm -hmm. this is something that especially right now, 
it is very, very turbulent. Everybody, there's a lot of people just upset about the economy, upset about the pandemic, upset about racial injustice. So be careful. It's very, very difficult to infer emotion or humor through a screen. And your words can then come back and bite you. So just be careful with your tone. If you feel yourself getting emotional or you feel yourself, you know, kind of on edge or your heartbeat starts ramping up, take a minute and pause before you, before you post, especially on LinkedIn, you know, and when in doubt, have somebody proofread or edit it before submitting. I do that a lot with, with some of my posts where I'm some of my more activist posts where I'll send it to a few friends and say, Hey, can you look at this? What do you think about this? Should I word this a different way? And get the, get the perspective. So then that way you're making sure that you're still on brand. You're still representing yourself, but you're representing yourself in a smart way. So then that way you, your, your thoughts and feelings and your words can't be misconstrued. So we talked about good tagging. I, I know Ben Lim. I know Ashley. Rhea knows me and Noreen and Mona Lisa. So, and here. Noreen, here we go. She's tagging me. Hey, there was a there was a really cool post where she saw in her newsfeed um, resources to help out people in California who had lost their jobs due to COVID nineteen. She knows I'm in California. She knows I have a big California presence. So she's tagging me. So I see that post. So then I can reshare with my network and that I can help people out. Um, we got Dallas here. He's a business contact. Again, I've only met him on LinkedIn and it's from the comments, et cetera. And so I commented on his post and said, hey, everybody, you should, you should take a look at uh, his company produces cybersecurity awareness training. I said, yeah, everybody should take a look at this. So then he said, thanks for spreading the word. Again, increasing that visibility. Um, and then we have here on the right, yet again, here's Michelle. I only met her virtually, I think through LinkedIn, um, but she had reached out to me. She's a fellow veteran. And again, she has proper tagging where she attended our, our talk at WESIS and tagging all of us and said, hey, thank you for, for your time, dedication, and efforts to the up and comers in cybersecurity. Trust me, we pay attention. We appreciate that. We put a lot of work and effort into these things. And we, it's important to, like Noreen said, thank the people that have helped you, thank your mentors, and then pay it forward. So in interest of time, I want to make sure we get to, we, we didn't get to do this last time. Mm -hmm. Oh, Noreen, you want to talk about InfoSec Twitter? <laughs> We're both. <laughs> to, I think today, we're today is fun. Like, um, depends on uh, also the audience you're trying to reach out to. Yep. Um, there are there are a lot of people over there, but also you're restricted how many characters or how much typing you can do. So you have to keep yours very brief. And uh, if you upload a picture, also that counts on the count. So that prohibits you on how much you can share. But sometimes your post can get lost over there and hard to cover back about. So, but it's a nice it's a nice place to also um, network with others, right? Um, it's easier to use, but some, most people consider it not really, really professional when you're really trying to step out into the industry. I found more connections who are more valuable for me on LinkedIn as opposed to Twitter. But um, it's good to use to both mediums. You never know. But everything you post, you like your retweet, remember, will always come back and haunt you. So be careful when you're using that. And, and make sure... Um, even as you join these social media platforms, make sure you check the security settings. On my Twitter, I have it locked to a point where if you want to connect with me, I have first to approve you before I can allow you to connect with me. I have to, to see why are we even connecting. I've gotten connections from somebody who is in a career that I'm not really in that career. And, uh, and I wonder why are we connecting? The next minute they reach out, with a weird message if you know so you realize they are not in the best interest for your career they're there for something else so tweak the settings visit the privacy and security settings lock it down because remember also the bad guys are out there right the threat actors are quickly out there to 
hack into your account and you don't want to fall a victim, right? Um, be sure that, uh, that you're talking to a real person, not a fake Twitter account. If they don't engage back, uh, these are signs this is not really a person, right? Uh, be careful with tagging people and companies in posts. Um, some companies allow you to post to, and to tag them, others don't. And also, before tagging people, maybe it's always good to check with your friends and, or your network, is it okay if I tag you in posts, right? Uh, just a matter of showing somebody's respect and appreciating their privacy. And then don't get sucked into controversial political discussions unless they are prepared to explain to your future employer, right? Uh, you, you can write so much about cybersecurity or about your career growth or encouraging or motivating others than focusing on the negativity, right? Um, focus on the good as opposed to the bad because the bad will always be there, the good will always be there, but be the bigger person. Even if, some, if somebody tags you, please reach out to them, tell them, please don't tag me on such uh, discussions uh, because that's, that's, that's how I view. And I own, own that you need to respect how I feel. If they don't agree with that, you can disconnect your uh, connection. Because remember, future employers, they're visiting these um, social media platforms. And we've even seen even with campaign, uh, when they come to, when people are being voted to an office, they bring up old posting or a newspaper article or a picture they once took. Remember, even if you delete something on the social media, it's still stored somewhere else. So be careful on what you have to do on social media. And that's always advocate your digital presence. Google yourself. What do you see? Right there will tell you what is it stands out for you and stand out against for others, right? And then for lots, lots of um, tweeters, especially in InfoSec are very opinionated. Some are very vendor pitched or they are very vendor focused. Um, others are just focused on their services because they're trying to sell you to that. They're not ready to engage in that open conversation of us. I like your product, however, can we talk about this um, policy? They will still go back to their product. Remember, because they are, very, they are sales. So they are there to closing the numbers. So be careful on those ones. And then again, consider, thank you, Merlia. Consider your personal brand. You have to check on your brand. Make sure you stand out the way you wanna be represented, right? If I check on your social media, and I'm hiring for a position, your resume says you last worked in company XYZ this year, your resume is saying this. So that makes me have a moment of discussion with you. We should be focusing on your career growth or whether you're getting a job or not. But here we are discussing where the difference is between your resume and your social media account, right? So enhance your personal brand make sure you stand out. There are many people, like if you've seen the stats, a lot of people have lost their jobs, which is so sad and so unfortunate. They will be looking for jobs. And I don't know, because it's not a matter of if or when, you don't want to find yourself in that situation with them and you're going to apply the same job with somebody who has been in industry for 34, for 24 years, and here you are with one or two or five years in, this, uh, in the industry but the employer is keen maybe to hire you because they can see your energy, you're ready to do that, but your personal brand fails you. It, it's not fair, right? So do what you can do to your own capability and then whatever you, you don't have control, you can work it along with whoever is interviewing you or in your career growth um, by improving, by doing your further education, your certifications, uh, your professional, like maybe writing blogs, writing books, and starting um, a cybersecurity program, what have you, right? But keep on keeping on, remembering your personal brand goes with you wherever you go. It's like your shadow. Mm -hmm. And since we've moved into the digital world, we have to watch our digital presence. And remember the cyber attacks are there, right? 
they're collecting our data every now and then. Um, some of you may say, maybe I, I really don't care what they have for me. But for you who don't care, it's the one they will target, and, but you don't want to be the face of the, <clears throat> the attackers. It's easy to get to you. So protect your brand. Um, make sure you also change your passwords. Don't share your password across all your social media platforms. I put myself a reminder every 30 days, my phone beeps and lets me know time to change your password. I don't have to wait for the 90 days, 60 days. It's become a habit for me. And remember, we all, as human beings, we are creatures of habits. We just want to write a password that you remember easily and then use it across all social media platforms the same. So that password is hacked, they can access all your other accounts. So make sure you, you use defense in depth, like a multi-factor application and protect your personal brand. So 